Hello everyone, this is Mad Dollar, and I'm here today with some action from the Thummer Throwdown at Matthews Park in Monroe, Georgia. I actually grew up in the uh, little town next to Monroe, and this is the only 18-hole course in the county. So today we will be starting on hole number one, and teeing off first is Jason Light, uh, better known as Jaybird. Jaybird is originally from Tennessee, but he moved to the Atlanta area uh, about a year and a half ago or so. And he plays for Prodigy Disc. Hole one's a pretty short hole, and he goes just a little bit deep. I'll be teeing second, and I went with the soft Cenus. Also threw it a little deep. Hole one is a shorty. You definitely want to get the birdie here, so you want to be parked. Uh, a little extra work we're creating for ourselves early in the round. That was Darren Dees out of Augusta teeing off third. And teeing fourth is my buddy John Matlack, also from Atlanta, Georgia. And Matlack throws a Nova, I believe, right up there pretty good. Last to tee will be Scott Renz, a local legend around Atlanta. Uh, Scott used to play a fair bit of golf. He and his brother Ryan Renz are both great players and uh, have been thousand rated players and were the best players in Georgia for a long time. Um, they're both out of the Wills Park area originally. And uh, Scott doesn't get to play a lot of tournaments anymore, so it was good to have him out at my tournament. So I was able to knock in a long birdie putt there, and Jason Light follows suit. Everyone else has uh, pretty easy work here for their birdie. Looking like we might start out with a nice little star frame. There's Dees. He putts with a uh, harp. I believe it's a BT medium, although I'm not exactly sure on that. If you notice, Scott there has a little bit of a one-legged putt, which is, you know, now that I think about it, there you see Matt Lack doing it from short. Uh, now that I think about it, you actually see that a fair bit around the Atlanta area and around Georgia in general. Josh Childs does it, Chad Gates does it. Uh, most of the guys do it for short putts only, but Scott Renz does it from, it seems, about everywhere. So hole number two, uh, a little under 300 feet straight uphill. Uh, Mando on the left side of the fairway. There used to be a building there. So That'll do. There. And Jay Bird with the Heiser route. I had originally thought about putting a Mando up for uh, this tournament to force people to throw the straight gap. Just because you see a lot of locals throw the Heiser route. I went with a Thummer with my Moonshine Spark. And Dees will try to follow it up with a Thummer himself with a Felon. This comes out just a little too early and it's going to give him a long putt. Matlack steps up with a backhand, straight up the gut. <coughs> Turns it over just a little, but that's going to work out for him. And Scott is also going to go with the Heiser route. Great looking shot from Scott, almost skipped in the basket. May have went a little long and got into the uh, tall stuff, but definitely a good bid. So Dees goes for his putt for a two and catches a little bit of a roll. He's going to have a comebacker for his three. Matlack slides his Nova in the left side. Oh, no. Trouble for Darren here. Uh, he's dead on line but comes in a little short and catches a roll away. Now he's got a long putt for his four. All kinds of trouble here on hole number two for Darren. I went up, went to tap out, realized Scott was back there hiding in the bushes, so Scott's going to go and take his stab at it. Scott puts with an ABR. I believe it's a DX ABR. And dead on line, but just couldn't quite get it in there. I'm putting with a Judge. The red judge in my hand is a classic soft, and the white one that I putt with mostly is a classic blend. I think now that the winner is rolling around, I'll probably be putting with the classic soft a little more. Although the classic blend that I putted with uh, during this tournament most of the time is a little flippier than I like, uh, because I've been throwing it off the tee for a long time. So hole three, you have two options. You have the straight route, you, you have the local Heiser route. Really Jaybird must be semi-local here because he threw the Heiser route. 
he catches a tree when trying to enter the green. Oh, I go with the Cenus. I'm trying to just throw it down the middle with little Annie. And instead, it comes out with that. just a on little bit on the beach. Of So, Jaybird and myself both uh, giving ourselves a long putt on hole number three. Matt like takes an AVR and throws it right down at the basket. Scott Renz is going to throw an R Pro AVR, I believe, here. Starts it with just a hair of Annie. Get up. Yeah, and should be a good shot. Probably get him right about the circle's edge. Dees goes with the thumber here. Um, it, there is a thumber route. I mean, it's pretty wide open for the thumber. However, I've noticed that in the past they just kind of skip and uh, roll away when you throw a thumber on this hole. So I usually just go with the back end. Dees was a little bit right, probably about 35 feet. Misses just over the top of the basket. I find myself on the left side of the green. I hit this tree uh, on a hyzer, so it's slightly blocking my line, um, so I can't really do my normal putt. So I'm trying to see if I can putt it here uh, straight without you know, having to hyzer around the tree. I couldn't do it, so I switched to the straddle. And I don't think I warmed up the straddle putt, but usually when I'm running tournaments, I get little to no warm up, but I had a very good tournament team uh, helping me out this weekend, including assistant tournament director John Reed, who did a ton of work out there, and uh, my girlfriend Carla Seward, who helped with all the tournament preparation and the check in. So it looks like the only one that's going to get a birdie this time is going to be Matlack, who parked it and maybe going to mark the CTP. I'm not sure. So I like to do a lot of different things in my tournaments um, just to try and create some extra fun. In this tournament, since the course is rather short, uh, I did a $20 side action where there was a cash CTP on every single hole, uh, except for three holes where it's a longest putt contest instead of uh, closest to the pin. So we moved to hole four. Hole four, if you take the main route, then you got to throw a little bit of an ante if you go backhand. And if you decide to throw a hyzer, you can kind of do that going a low route on the right side. Uh, you do see locals do it, but I think most pros will probably take the big route on the left. Uh, you saw two very good backhand turnover shots there. I'm just going to throw a thumber down the left side. Uh, I'm going to try to play a skip thumber here. That way I can take that big cedar tree out of play. And I went with the Moonshine Milton's Spark, new, uh, and it skipped up very nicely. Should give me a short putt for birdie. Scott will take the line that Matt Lack and Jason Light decided to take. And Scott almost <laughs> aces it with a rock there. Great shot from Scott. These goes up that right side I talked about with a backhand, and it just straightened out a hair too much, so... Long putt for D's and everyone else is pretty close here on the green. So after four holes, uh, Jaybird is three under. If I make this, I'll be three under. And Matlack is parked up there. He's going to mark the CTP. And that's going to get him to four under through four holes. So the beginning of this course is pretty easy. So you really want to go ahead and score quick. Um, there's a lot of scoring to be done in the front nine, so if you let a few slip away, uh, once the course gets a little tougher at the beginning of the back nine, you're going to have trouble. So it's good to go ahead and build up a lead right here. I would like to get uh, at least five of the first six when I play this course. All six are total, totally birdieable, but you know it's not easy to get a birdie on every hole every time. So Matt Light's going to mark that CCP and tap in with his Nova, and we'll move on to hole number five. So hole five, uh, it's mostly just a tunnel shot, but there's not too many trees off to the left or right, so you can kind of filter oh, you through go. if you miss your line a little bit. Not like an ace. ace already. Matt Light, however, was so close to hitting the line that he hit the tree, defining the fairway down there on the left side. It's going to leave him with about a 50-footer, I believe. There's also talk about pushing this basket back maybe about 30 or 40 feet to get it closer to the water's edge. Um, it's probably about 45 uh -huh. or 50 feet from the water right now. Maybe a little less. 
but it would definitely uh, change the concept of the hole and put a little extra danger in there. Scott's going to go with the Heiser route here. It was looking pretty good, but it just leaked a little bit to the right and kicked down. Knees will also go with that Heiser shot. That's funny, I almost never see that Heiser shot when I drive out here to play doubles. So Matt let's get a long look. You can see the lake back there in the background. So holes 1 through 5 uh, play around the lake, and then holes 15 through 18 also play around the lake. And at the conclusion of this event, we had a safari skins uh, for the top three pros and the top finishing uh, am player. And they played for 50 bucks a hole, and we pretty much used every shot going over the lake. So total safari layout with lots of challenging water shots. And that video will come out shortly. So Matt Lang misses his first hole of the tournament, and Jason and myself both catch back up with a birdie there. We can tell already that this is looking like it's going to be a battle the entire day. Hole 6, little shorty throwing off the dam uh, downhill between those two trees. There was a little talk of making those two trees a double mando, uh, but really didn't want to hurt flow or anything like that, so... We didn't add too much in way of uh, mandos or out of bounds. We just added maybe one extra mando to protect another green. The course is not used to having 75 players on it at one time. So we had to think about those things when running an event. This hole actually comes in at about 200 feet and is the best ace run on the course for sure. In fact, this hole did get aced today or during the tournament, uh, by the original course designer, Tim Petria, who now lives in North Carolina. So it was nice to have him there, and cool that he hit an ace. How about Darren Dees there with about a 45-foot uphill putt with the harp? Very nice putt from Darren. This guy gives him a little love on the way by. I have a little bit of a comebacker after throwing the Cenus a little deep. Looks like everyone else will clean it up for their birdies and we will move on to hole seven here in a second hole seven plays with a creek running all the way down the right side it's actually a creek bed rather there's no water in it and as you can see in some of the videos or pictures of the lake the water is down a lot right now um they're definitely needing some rain here in the atlanta area but hole 7 uh, has that creek bed that's OB the entire way down the right side, and it comes in about 300 feet. And once you get to the basket, the creek bed is probably only 15, yeah, about 15 feet from the basket. Uh, I was actually not a fan of having the creek bed be out of bounds, um, but that is the way that it is normally played here uh, during doubles and such. So we went with it, and um, we had the entire thing uh, painted off OB. So my thumber landed right in front of the basket and caught a little slide and went into the out of bounds. So I'm about 20 feet from the basket, but I am out. Matlock tries to take the straight route. Gets through there pretty good before catching a little something. Scott's going to go with an AVR right down the middle. See, this hole is not 300 feet. I believe it's about 275 feet. Scott just pures that AVR shot, though. He's going to love that. Looks like a birdie for sure. So this is where the course starts getting just a little bit tougher and has some teeth. With the out-of-bounds here on this one and then the next few holes being quite difficult before you get back to this area of the course and have the creek out of bounds some more. There's Jaybird with a big putt, looking at about a 50 footer, a little Annie around the tree. Jaybird seems dialed in today on his putting. There I am, tapping in from the edge of the creek where I went out of bounds. And Diesel tap in here. Scotty Too Hottie is still looking at a birdie. 
with his beautiful drive. You know, Scott must drive and putt with the same putter because I don't think I saw him putt with that putter again. Maybe he was just tapping in with it since his uh, driving putter was on the ground. Or his normal putting putter, rather. So we moved the hole eight. We have a nice little tee pad built up here on the deck. And you see the Mando there on the yes. right side of the fairway. Um, the right side of that tree actually used to be completely filled with other trees, but the county clear-cut some, I believe, to uh, sell some lumber. So now a lot of people throw that Heiser uh, route up the right side past that Mando tree. But as you can see right now, there's some players over there with this whole 12's green is in that area so that's why we came up with the bando and i'm not sure if it'll stay or if it was just for the tournament but player safety is always important it's a key issue scott goes with the, goes with the backhand of the middle matt lack's gonna throw his t-bird this all used to be really tough when that right side was completely closed in uh the left side was also a lot hairier and uh, you basically can only get to this hole throwing a low skip thumber or a low skip sidearm. Going with that trusty moonshine spark again. Gets a real big flare up there. I was thinking I might have a CTP in my future until we got up there and I realized that it went on past it. So Jay Bear with a nice upshot there almost tosses it in. And Dees isn't quite going to connect on that one. Now we got Scott putting with that same putter that he drove with in the last hole. Right, and he good. knocks it in there dead center. Scott runs from about 30 feet. Matlock actually just bought this Nova when he was at USBGC's. He's been putting with the Nova most of the year, uh, but he said he needed a fresh one. And so he bought it and then just started putting with it this day. He actually played the uh, course semi-blind. He had never played here before, uh, but he rode to the tournament with me. And since I had to get here so early, since I was the tournament director, he was able to get a whole round in ahead of time. See me pulling my Zuka cart that I got from Ridge Roller Customs there. Loving not having to carry a bag right now. Definitely a big weight off my back. Ha ha ha, pun intended. So Jaybird taps in for three. Me, Matt, Lack, and Scott will all grab birdies, and Dees will also get a three. So we come to hole number nine, and the end of the front nine. Basically, you have to go straight oh, yeah. and then turn right. Oh, wow, I thought it was features a lot of right turning holes, and I really like that. Uh, but they also seem to have little squirrely hyzer routes if you're willing to take them, basically. Uh, players that don't have a strong forehand game or a thumber game will uh, just try and challenge some of these lower, less percentage backhand rounds. It makes for some fun golf. You get to see a lot of different shots. So I got a thumber there just to give myself a putt. Matt Lack goes backhand, Annie with a T-bird. A T-bird seems like every time I threw a thumber, Matt Lack was chipping a T-bird around. See, Jaybird's probably going to take a mid-range and throw it at that left side and let it turn on over. does but he's not quite able to get it like he wants. Dees is going to come with the thumber. I believe he's going Moonshine Spark as well this time. He usually uh, thumbers the felon but I did see him throw bounce. the spark. But he got a little curl to the yeah, right now. 40 footer. So Jaybird who came in just a little early is going to have a long look here. Even oh, when his putts man, miss, they look pretty darn good. So this is Scott for four in a row, I believe. Dead center, just a hair low. So Scott used to play a lot more than he gets to now. Uh, I believe he works every Saturday, so he doesn't get to play many tournaments. So his rating fluctuates a lot, but Scott was a 1,000 rated player for a long time and definitely, uh, definitely got to look out for any time he's at a tournament. My thumber went a little long, it didn't quite get far enough right, but it got me in range for my judge. So pretty strong front nine for myself, I ended up at 7 under on the front I believe. Matlock's hanging right there with me. And Jaybird, I believe, 
I believe Jaybird and Matt Lack are probably one stroke behind me now after the front nine. Pretty strong start for all three of us. And when we move on to hole number 10, we will play down this power line cut that this basket is in. And hole number 10 is about 400 feet, slightly downhill, so it sets up good for a mid-range if you can make them float. I go with my baseline mace, it's actually a first run mace, that uh, Matlack actually gave me when I first switched to Latitude, so I have not taken that disc out of my bag ever since he gave it to me, and I love it, and I throw it all the time. <laughs> I think it flew pretty good down there. It's going to give me a long putt on the left side. I'm not sure if Scott went with an AVR or a rock. I'm pretty sure he just threw uh, an AVR. You know, like, it's going to come up like a little a short long, because of that. Long. And here comes Matt Luck. He's going to throw that T-Bird again. So he's got a very up. nice line on this shot here. He's going to need it to skip or slide. I I can't really see from not. here if it did, but we'll see when we get down there to the basket. Jaybird's going to come out with a fairway driver. I believe that fairway driver is a F5, although I'm not really sure. And Dees is going to bust out a big old thumber here. I believe he's going with a felon. Nice distance, nice range. Might have rolled a little to the right on, upon landing. So as you can see here, we have some nice, uh, nice colors in the trees. This is a perfect time of year to be playing golf in Georgia. It's finally cooling off. Uh, it was in the 70s most of the day during this event. Scott with a great bid. Once again, he's dead on line. This time, just a little bit high. I'm going to knock mine in there from just outside the circle. And this is not a CTP hole, it's a longest putt hole, so I'll get to move that longest putt hole, or longest putt flag. And Dees, his thumber did roll, he's over here on the right side, he's going to have to putt from a knee. Try to get it to go uphill, and luckily he is a hyzer putter, and he's able to knock it in there. Great putt from Dees. Jaybird with the beautiful tree beside him, beautiful drive, beautiful putt. Birdie for Jaybird. And here's Matlack. Matlack's doing a little squawking about this being the longest uh, putt hole instead of CTP as he has parked it. Always a good job when you get a birdie on hole number 10. It's a very, uh, very open, easy line. You don't have to worry about throwing it between trees, but it's hard to control that distance and make it fade at the end. So hole number 11 is a little less than 300 feet, but it plays a lot longer. Hard to get a birdie on this one. Uh, I want the forehand. That's what you see most locals do. In fact, I never see anyone throw a backhand. Hey, you're throwing that with my hatchet. It went right Matt like just tries to do it there with his turn. And I guess it looked impressive because Jay Bird's gonna step up and do the same thing. Looks like both these guys didn't quite flip them enough. Oh, that was a good little branch, baby. Turn it right. I have not even seen it. Thing. It's pretty crazy how I've. All the times I've played doubles, I don't see anyone throw a backhand roller. And then the first PDGA tournament ever at the course, I watched three pros throw three rollers. <laughs> so Scott's just going to go with the uh, backhand up the middle here. He's throwing a rock. The problem Stay is up. getting the height. Stay up. you got to get the line. height, and then you got to turn right. around that big tree. Yeah. Looks like he throws a very nice shot, and he should have himself a long putt for birdie. So Dee's um, hit that early tree and was down on the right side, and he had a pretty tough upshot. He threw a very nice forehand, though. I also had a tough upshot. I kind of had to go around the backside of some trees uh, just to get on the backside of the green. And I think I juiced it just a little bit. It's going to leave me with a little bit of a par putt coming back. Hope to avoid the first bogey of the day. So Jaybird's got a long look, but probably about 50 feet uphill and he's not quite going to get the height on that one good bid from Scott Renz once again he's dead on line this time just a little low and I hit the high side but it's uh, it's in the center and disc catchers usually catch those in fact uh, I think disc catchers may catch a little better center high than they do center center 
because center center you see some come off the pole and you see some slice through but center high they seem to drop straight down in it's funny how all baskets catch just a little bit differently but disc catchers are generally my favorite basket to put on uh, they're the ones you see the, the least amount of spits I believe but you will still see them trust me <laughs> Alright, hole number 12 is in the new position that was just put in recently. Um, that creek that was on hole number 7 also runs down the middle of this hole, so it's bad if you hit one of those trees halfway there and kick down, you have a chance of going out of bounds in the creek. Uh, Matlack comes in and hits a tree on that, taking the hyzer line, which is actually a pretty new line for this hole. Um, before, when it was just the short pin, there was no hyzer line, but... The hyzer line is tight, but it is there, and it's clean, so I saw uh, several guys taking it during this tournament. Jaybird's going to go with that hyzer line. Jaybird gets a little loving off that branch that pushes him back into the gap. Uh, he went with a fairway driver and went just a little bit deep, so he's going to have about a 40 or 50 foot comebacker after that drive he was a little fortunate to get through but he's still gonna have to do some work if he wants to capitalize on that break so Scott looks like he's making a decision Scott goes back to the bag for a disc switch looks like he's gonna try the sidearm route right down the middle the traditional gap as we'll call it He comes out just a little bit early, takes a tree kick, but he's going to land short of the creek, so no one's out of bounds, and everyone's got a chance to get up there and at least get their par. Deez gives it a pretty good uh, good little run there, and Scott's going to chip up with an AVR. That should be good enough to get his par. Matlack goes Heiser with a Nova. Yep. And left himself just a little bit of work for his par, actually. So here's Jaybird, who went deep. He's on the way over there to the next tee pad. And he is going to jump on this one, I believe. Bang! Great putt there from Jaybird. In fact, that one was so good. Why don't we have a little extra view of this one in slow motion? Takes the jump putt, hits it with a little bit of Annie. There's some wobble, but that's all right. Drops it right there in the corner side of the pocket. Great birdie from Jay Bird. And that's what great players do. When you get a little bit of a fortunate break, you take advantage. And Jay Bird is a great player, and he took full advantage there. Matlack goes into crane range to tap in for his par. And Dees is looking at a four. So we'll move on to hole number 13. Hole 13 is the second, or I think the second longest hole in the course. And just to the right of the basket, all the way down the right side, is that creek that's out of bounds. I went with a fluid escape there. I like the escape. Uh, they've been a little too flippy uh, from what I want out of it. But I started trying it in the fluid plastic, and man, it is a great disc. So definitely going to keep one of those in the bag for a long time. Matlack's going to try to play the uh, hyzer line. Yeah, I was thinking that was looking shot. But... The dark tree is in the middle of the middle right side of the fairway down there. Um, actually, it's kind of the one that defines the fairway. A lot of people, if they're trying to go to the pin, throw a flex shot around that tree. Uh, but that does bring uh, the creek into play a lot more. So you'll see a lot of guys just finish to the left on this if they're playing it smart. So you're going to see a lot of long putts. And this is the longest putt hole instead of CTP, just for that reason. So Matlack caught a tree to keep him from going out of bounds, but now his second shot's in a tough spot. And he's not able to get through the trees there, so Matlack is going to look like he's going to get a bogey. And this will be the first bogey for Matlack today. Nice up shot there. Just a little bit of work left for his four. And here's Jason, who came in short, but he's got a long look. Oh! Almost threw it in. See a little wiggle there in his body language, telling him that he thought it might go in. Ooh, Dees also gives it a good bid. 
And Scott's also going to be about 50 feet out, just a little short. That'll get, get him up and down for his par. So I walked this one off. It was about 35 feet. Decided not to jump putt it. Uh, putting's feeling pretty strong so far this round, so felt confident in making this one. And, you know, it really doesn't matter what kind of baskets they are. Uh, disc golf has that little bit of a fluke factor, and so you're going to have cut-throughs, you're going to have spit-outs, and... That counts. Mine don't. If you hear there, you see Matt, like, looking over. <laughs> Might have made a little comment about hitting it center and not catching, and Matt, like, hooked in the corner pocket, but... You know, that's disc golf. Corner pocket's actually going to catch most of the time because it doesn't have a chance of spinning out. So. Jay Bird puts a good putt in there after giving it a run for a two and uh, knocks in his par putt. So this is the last of the hard holes. After this one, we kick back into the open and uh, have a few more birdies to go after until you get to hole 18, which is the longest hole of the course. So everyone cleans up over here and knock that one in dead center. Happy about the result there. <laughs> awesome. So uh, the course designer, Tim Petrie, actually aced a hole six right as I was standing on this tee pad before I was ready to throw everything. But uh, that was really cool to hear the, those guys celebrating the uh, hole in one. So I've always thrown up this left side here because the basket used to be way shorter, but they put in this new long pin, and uh, I started seeing all these guys throwing this hyzer route. So I decided that in the second round I would try it out also, especially after hitting the tree going down, <coughs> going down the original route there. Matt Lack looks like he's going to chip a T-bird again. Something that Josh Childs does, uh, you know, he'll take a driver and just kind of chip it around on shorter shots. And uh, I think Matt like adapted a little bit of that action because uh, it's a really good way to uh, to be consistent, you know, from short distances instead of trying to like control and uh, throw a mid range or putter at exact distance. You just kind of let the driver fade to the hole. Wow, Scott with another long bid. That's probably about the sixth or seventh putt that he has been so close to making. Uh, if Scott made every putt that hit the basket this round, he would have shot a course record. So That's the great thing about this game, though. You know, you can put yourself into position, but you still have to finish. And then sometimes you just can't ever put yourself into position. So sometimes you may score the same thing two rounds in a row, but the round be completely different both times. And that's one of the things we love about disc golf, and I think that's the thing that keeps people coming back over and over again. So now we're on hole number 15, where you tee off from the dam, and you throw over the lake most of the way on this one. This one comes in at about 285 feet, and Jason's shot comes in at about 295 feet. Very good drive from Jason. Dees goes with a thumber here. And it's a very nice one. Put him inside 25 feet. Matlack's on the tee with a metal flake firebird. You see a lot of guys take an overstable disc and trust it by throwing it over the water here. Matlack almost skips it in the hole. Very nice drive. I'm going to go with a compass gold line with the Matt Dollar stamp. I really love how they're a little bit extra stable. Uh, they always hyzer at the end when thrown flat. And here's actually a little instant replay of this one. Slow it down, it almost went in the basket. Curled just around the backside. Gonna leave me about a 28 foot birdie putt. Now we got Scott on the tee. Hyzer with a driver, it's going right at the basket. Huge skip on that one. Circle just behind the basket, but skip probably 60 feet. He's going to have a really long putt here. More of a little bit of a throw than a putt. Chips it up there right under the basket. So I'm looking at this 28, 30 footer on the comeback. I was actually a little surprised how far this one went past the basket. Um, but when you challenge the basket for a hole in one, you're usually going to go pretty far past. Bird has about 20 feet left in his birdie. 
and he makes good as usual. Seems pretty seems to be a pretty common process today. And Matlock will be closest to the pin for our group and he'll tap in for his birdie. And we'll move into hole number 16. We got a pretty close match going on over here. Malak was hanging right there with me and Jaybird until he took that bogey on hole 13. But that's about the only difference in score between the three of us. So hole 16, Jaybird needs it to get down. It does. He asked for it, he shall receive. Um, this one's about 270. You got OB on the left and OB about 25 feet behind the basket. So you got to be careful on this hole. Uh, if you get a little greedy and go for the park job, a lot of times you'll just slide on out of bounds. So Matt like also comes up a little short on this one. Kind of brought the nose up on that one. Yeah, yeah these guys appear to be a little tentative. Uh, I take a Cenus and actually play to the right side of that tree out there. And Heiser did nicely, but it lands on a little bit of soft sand there um, and doesn't really go anywhere. So I'll have a little bit of chicken on my putt as well. And now we've got Scott throwing his AVR right up the middle. Oh, no, he'll go to the right side, too, and try to play that same line as me. Although his disc is not as overstable, so it's going to fade way right and leave him with a long uphill putt. He's not able to capitalize. Here we have Matlack from about 30 feet. Oh, and he's just a little bit high there. Good bid from Matlack online, but... Not good enough for the birdie. You know Jaybird wants this one. He doesn't want to give up a stroke to me at this point. And he throws a great putt. Covering a lot of footage today with his putts is Jaybird. Dees knocks his birdie putt in. Looks like Matt Lack and Scott will be the only ones not to get the birdie here on hole number 16. Oh! I stand corrected. What do you know? I uh, did not take my time on that one. Just tried to toss it in there. A little lack of focus there, and uh, we'll definitely have to pay for that one. Our next to last hole of the round, hole number 17. It's a short downhill par 3. Well, every hole in this course is a par 3. Uh, it's a short downhiller, and you have a bunch of different lines you can choose to go. You can go the straight route or the right route. Yeah or the left route. Uh, it appears that Jason was trying to go down the middle right and Dee's just threw a thumber at it. Matt, like, let's see which way he's going to go. Let's throw in this AVR. He looks to take it from the left to right. That's probably the best way to do it. That way, if you do hit a tree, you still have a putt. I'm going to throw a sidearm felon down that same route. And I'm going to get the tree coming in on it. So, after missing that little shorty on the last one, um, looking at maybe not picking up birdies on two short holes in a row here, you definitely don't want to do that coming down the stretch. But after giving Jaybird that last one, uh, I definitely need to get one back. Hopefully I'm able to jump putt this one in there. I'm not going to lie. Your practice stroke, I legit thought you just stepped slow-mo replay of that jump putt I froze it down uh, paused it when I got it really slow just to make sure I didn't flip fault there and it looks like I was releasing the disc beforehand but it looks really weird how the disc comes out way before my arm is fully extended uh, having slow-mo replay is uh, pretty cool but it's really weird when you uh, think about how your disc is actually coming out compared to when you think it's coming out yeah just a couple holes ago so a couple tap-ins here on 17. Finishing hole, hole number 18, coming in at a little over 400 feet and playing uphill over the lake at first and then across an OB road. Matt Lack throws a wraith here, I believe. Oh no, actually that is his turn and uh, it did do its namesake. It turned right over. I'm gonna go with uh, one of my gold line ballistas with the Matt Dollar stamp and try to throw it with some hyzer. Got a little bit of turn on there, but I believe it scoots on up there for a putt. This is probably the hardest hole in the course to birdie. Uh, unless you have about 430 feet of D 
Um, you're not going to get up there. Not sure what Scott's going with here, but he turns it over a little too much. Still has the distance to slide across the street. And here's Jaybird throwing a D something or another. Turns his over just a little bit, and it's a little low, but he'll get himself over there on the good side of the road. And D's will be last to go. He also elects to throw a backhand here. And he will also get across the road. So five for five on getting across the road there inside of our group. And Scott is pretty far out here, looking at about a 60-footer. Gives a little toss move and drains it. Great, oh, Scott. Great, Scott. Let's back that up and uh, see it again in slow motion. Scott looks like he's going to jump putt it, and then he just does this beautiful little flick of the wrist. Nice little Anheuser float, nose up, and it just settles right there in the chain. And that's how it's done, ladies and gentlemen. Now we got Matlag trying to follow him up from way downtown over here. Not quite going to get it in there. Dees with another long look. Not, also not able to get it in there. And man, is that thing not rolling all the way back again? He's had some unfortunate luck today. Jaybird has an uphill 45 footer. And he's going to come up just a hair short, so I'm the last chance for a birdie on hole number 18 to end this round. Got to go in, right? Well, maybe not today. <laughs> oh, that's going to do it for our first round here. So after 18 holes, Jaybird and myself both come in at 11 under par with a 43. Matlack comes in at 45. Scott Renz with a 47. And Darren Deeds at 51. Thank you guys for watching. I'd like to thank John Reed for being my assistant TD, Carla Seward, and Gabe Foster for helping out, and also to Will Peterson for filming. Thanks to Latitude 64 for their support of myself and my tournaments. We'll see you guys back with the second round. You run it. And John Reed, the assistant tournament director.